Welcome to Your Family's Health, the program that focuses on health care issues with unique and different modalities for taking charge of your health today. Experts talk weekly with our continuing roster of guests from around the country and right here in Nassau County to keep you up to date on the latest health issues and trends. Take care of your mind, body, and soul. Spend the next half hour with the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC, and get on the journey to better health. Hello and welcome to Your Family's Health. My name is Dr. Janine Cookward from the nursing department here at Nassau Community College. Today we're going to get a little dirty because the topic that we're talking about is poop, also known as fecal matter. And you're going to have a poop IQ and improve your digestive health with a little potty talk. My guest today is health educator Dr. Julie Gatza, a chiropractic physician who has assisted thousands of patients resolve a wide variety of physical ailments using her understanding of nutrition and alternative therapies. She helps patients maintain optimum health with a focus on the role that digestion plays in maintaining a healthy immune system. Dr. Julie, welcome to Your Family's Health on the Voice of NASA Community College 90.3 WHPC. Thanks for having me. So tell us first a little bit about you. What made you want to focus your career or part of your career uh, as a chiropractic physician on digestion? Well, years ago when I graduated chiropractic school, 31 years ago, I uh, thought I was going to change the world with chiropractic adjustments. And I found that As great as they were, they fell short with a lot of people's health. And um, we delved a bit deeper and we found that digestion is pretty much the key to getting even a chronic neck problem to stabilize or skin to improve, digestive issues of all kinds, sleep problems, metabolism problems, weight problems, even breathing and asthma all had its similarity at um, a healthy digestive system or an unhealthy digestive system. So, We put a lot of focus on um, making it efficient. You can't make it super amazing. You can only make it work efficiently. And once we started to correct everyone's digestion and get it efficient again, was then when we could actually make changes with people's health across the board and a lot of array of things that they were taking a lot of medications for, frustrated and, um, you know, visiting the um, the traditional doctors and not getting answers that they were satis- satisfied with. So how does a chiropractic physician differ in the approach of digestive health versus your typical physician? Because we're chiropractors and chose to be this type of a doctor, we are um, not licensed to give any drugs or do any surgery. So with that um, limitation, which I fully wanted when I joined um, that group, uh, we have to find natural solutions. We, as chiropractors, see if there's any nerve problems that are going to digestion or any area of digestion that might be um, interfered that's keeping things from working properly. Are there nutrients that people are deficient in? Are they eating things that they might be inflaming their digestive tract with that we need to eliminate from their diet? Are they making enough digestive enzymes? And if not, why not? So when we look at it this way, we're looking at actually the cause of the problem, not just trying to cover up acid reflux, um, constipation, diarrhea with medications over the counter or even prescribed. So is there a connection between the spine and digestive health? Absolutely. If um, you take a look at the spine, in between each bone, you have a hole where a nerve should exit from the spinal cord. And you have nerves that go to the pancreas, which secretes enzymes to break down your food. You have nerves that go to the gall- gallbladder, which um, secretes bile to break down your fats. You have nerves that allow the small intestine to absorb properly and nerves that allow um, the waste products to exit from the body. So if any of those nerves are compromised from injuries, accidents, um, even as a child, you might 25 years later have chronic constipation and you're throwing all these drugs at them and medications at it. And really a lot of times all you have to do is go free up that nerve by a chiropractic adjustment And uh, it's like unparking the car from the garden hose when you're trying to handle the garden with fertilizer and changing out the dirt and new plants. And the chiropractor across the street says, listen, just flip me the keys. They unpark the car from the garden hose and it's a miracle that the garden now works. And everyone's like, really? (laughs) So I guess in its most, you know, simple matter, we unpark a lot of cars from garden hoses. We take a lot of interference off the nerves from 
misalignments. That's very interesting. So would you say as a chiropractic physician that you are the first go to when it comes down to digestive health? And then possibly see someone like a gastroenteritis, gastroenterologist or um, someone that is really typically gone to for this type of issue. I mean, that would be the perfect world if I was the first go to, because I think we could avoid a lot of people being frustrated and taking the, the sort of the last solutions um, to correcting this. But generally, I see everyone's failures. <laughs> So, Mm -hmm. you know, it would be perfect if people said, you know, I have gas, bloating, indigestion, constipation, heartburn, diarrhea, and, you know, whatever else may be going on. How can you help me? Well, I have lots of solutions for that. And then if it wasn't improving, then we, you know, we send them to somebody that, you know, it's probably something more serious than what that can help. However, um, most people, you know, are taking Tums and Rolaids and Maalox and Mylanta and all these different things to handle their symptoms. And then they're visiting their MDs to get more symptom relief rather than actually getting to the source of the problem. And uh, once you correct your digestion, you have a real good chance of improving the rest of your life's health. So let's get right down to it. What should my fecal matter look like? Well, interesting. In the 50s, -hmm. they used to teach this in health class. Mm -hmm. And in health class, every kid knew to take a look every day at their bowel movements and um, judge how good was their health that day. So it should, you know, be um, brownish in color. It should be um, in a nice formed log. And uh, it should either float a little. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, it should look like what you think poop should look like. Mm -hmm. But what happens is people's digestion isn't working. So you can have small rabbit-like formations. You can have loose bowels. You can not go for a day or two or five. Um, You can have, um, you know, different colors. You know, there are sometimes certain foods that can change the color of your your feces. If you eat beets, sometimes you might be worried that you have, you know, blood in the toilet. Well, beets will do that to you. But you do, when you inspect it, it, it is simply just a, it's kind of like, you know, taking a look at yourself in the mirror every day and saying, wow, I have circles under my eyes or, geez, I look kind of worn out or, you know, I look pale or, you know, whatever it may be. You, you do, you are able to judge at least your health at one level by looking at um, what's happening with your, um, with your poop every day. So if a patient is anticipating coming to you, uh, would you suggest that they take uh, some type of diary as to how their poop or fecal matter looked over a certain amount of time to give you some sense of where you are going to expect or what you are going to suggest in in the treatment plan? Well, I mean, mostly I get that through their history. Mm -hmm. And once I understand what they've been going through, we get them on a program that will actually correct this pretty quickly. So it's not a very long term process to get this back on track. Um, you know, I mentioned the pancreas not making enough digestive enzymes. It's a huge problem with people where they're eating food that they just truly aren't able to produce enzymes to break down those foods. For instance, people will eat steak and you need very specific enzymes to break down that steak or meat products or fish or chicken or any protein. There's specific enzymes that we make that break down our fats and um, enzymes that break down our carbohydrates. When we are secreting these enzymes, We get all the nutrition that we need from our diet, and this is how we live healthy lives. Our soil has been changed. Our seeds are changing. The way we prepare foods is changing. So this isn't the same sort of animal that we were looking at 50 years ago. We now have a lot of fast foods. We have a lot of preservatives. We have a lot of Roundup in all of our grains, and people are really struggling health-wise. You know, you look around at the Americans, and you see we are fat. We are you know, lazy looking. And it's the problem is we don't have nice clean food anymore. So it's been altered and been allowed to be altered. And now what it seems normal, it's not normal. So you mentioned the term nice, clean food. Describe that mm-hmm. for me and, and uh, how that be, impacts a bowel movement. Well, protein, chicken, fish, eggs, um, meat, clean food, not in sauces, not from a weird hamburger made from a double arched place. I'm talking food that you actually know what it is when you buy it. It doesn't have anything else except for that food in it. And then you make it with ingredients that you have from home, you know, also natural, not, you know, covering it up in a bunch of sauces and bottled things. So clean food as far as protein, people aren't eating enough of it. Um, And then vegetables. I like my patients to have um, steamed green vegetables, 
I don't care if they want to, you know, put them on the grill or saute them, but broken down a little bit while I'm, I'm correcting people's digestive uh, problems. It's protein and vegetables. I eliminate the coffee, the teas, the pops from their diets, the carbonation, and water is the only thing they're allowed to eat because there's no reason to put other things in. The body needs water. It doesn't need caffeinated drinks because you're tired. What it needs is nutrition from your diet. It needs the ability to break down these foods and be able to wring nutrition from those foods so you can feed the rest of your body. The only way we get nutrients is through our um, our diet. You can't lay in a bathtub of vitamins and expect to be healthy. So this is where it starts and clean food is that when people are hungry, I have them have a hard boiled egg. I have them eat some, you know, carrot sticks or, you know, things that are just real food, not weird bars and unwrapping things and reaching in your purse for something that's covered in chocolate that's supposed to be healthy. So you're moving away from processed foods, anything that's processed okay. more towards. So you're not suggesting a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet. You're not at talking all. more about you can eat meat. How does that impact your bowel movements when you eat meat versus when you don't eat meat? So if you're talking red meat, a lot of people's digestion is having a hard time in the first place, which is why they say, oh, you know, I can't eat red meat. They aren't making the enzymes they need to break it down. So it is a complicated food. It is one that takes a bit more time to break itself down. So in the beginning, I'll have them eat a lot of fish and chicken and eggs. Once we start to get the digestive system working better, less inflamed, more nutrients from that food, now they're starting to make their own enzymes. And I also liberally give high quality digestive enzymes to my patients when they're um, healthy or they're not healthy because that allows that food to be broken down um, quite easily. So the one I use is called Absorbade. Uh, it has all the components that you need to actually um, be able to get all these nutrients from your diet the way you're supposed to. And, um, you know, when you're healthy, you want that nutrients. When you're unhealthy, you also want those nutrients from, from your diet. So when do I take Absorbabe and where do I buy it? Uh, you can take it before your meal, during your meal, after your meal. You can take it at night before you go to bed on an empty stomach and the enzymes in there have the ability to break down inflammation. It has the ability to break down viruses and bacteria and toxins. So if you take them at night, you wake up with less inflammation in the body. Let's say your back hurts or your hands are swollen or your ankles are swollen or you've been traveling or you just feel like, you know, it's just not, you're just not so great. Well, you take these enzymes at night and it also helps. So you can't go wrong with um, taking them with meals or without meals. You can um, find them at some of your um, more high-quality uh, health food stores, or you can get onto the website, which is um, naturesources.com, and you can um, read about the Absorbaid. They have a thing on there that if you would like to get some free samples, you can sign up for that as well, or you can call a 1-800 number and uh, use the code RADIO. And you can ask for free samples as well or get 20% off your first order, which is one 800 827-7656. Could you say that number again? Sure. It's 1-800-827-7656. The fact is, it's so lovely to be educated. People are grasping for information. There's loads of data out there. And, you know, thanks to somebody like you who runs the show and, you know, has things that people can actually utilize but it's never going to help them unless they do something about it. So you can be thoroughly educated and still be thoroughly unhealthy. And, you know, the fact that these guys offer free samples and an easy way to do it, whether you want to call or get on the website. I mean, I've used a lot of enzymes in the course of my career as a doctor, and this one satisfies all the points. It checks off every portion on the list. And, you know, I've had people who are suffering with you know, horrible acid reflex that are, you know, taking the things from the med medical doctor to try to handle that. And, you know, I've given them these enzymes and they're like, seriously, in 20 minutes, I'm that much better. And I'm like, yep, you are. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, if you are having any digestive problems, it really just is a warning sign that says things aren't normal. It's common, but it's not normal to have these problems. And, you know, the reason that I talk about digestion and poop and, you know, get down and dirty is these are things that need to be understood and known and not bypassed because how many people have not looked at this and ended themselves up in the hospital or surgery or maybe not even existing um, because they weren't aware of what was going on digestively. 
You're listening to Your Family's Health on the Voice of NASA Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Dr. Janine Cookerard, and today you are learning about how to have a healthy digestive system and how our bowel movements can help us identify bigger problems inside our bodies. My guest today is health educator is Dr. Julie, a chiropractic physician who helps patients maintain optimum health with a focus on the role that digestion plays maintaining a healthy immune system. So Dr. Julie, how many bowel movements should um, a healthy adult be having every day? One. One bowel movement. If you're having one, one is the normal. Some people might, you know, have the ability to you know, void more often in the day. But when it becomes, you know, significantly more than one, now you've got the um, inability to be able to absorb that nutrition. It means you're eating your food and you're instantly eliminating, which means you didn't really have time to actually um, get the absorption that you needed in the small intestine. So, mm-hmm. you know, I have a lot of patients that have come to me that have been constipated. And when I do get their history, I find, you know, it's two, three, four, five days at a time and been going on for years And what's happening at that point is people are reabsorbing the toxins. You're not only getting um, things into the bloodstream that you shouldn't, but also you're getting the toxins and you can even get feces put into the bloodstream. Once that's occurring, your immune system recognizes it as a foreign invader and starts going on an attack, which uses up your store of nutrition, which is the thing you're lacking. So it becomes this sort of, you know, crazy cycle of um, deficiencies And uh, it's hard then to turn it around unless you're really disciplined about getting it the way it should be. Are you seeing more patients with constipation or diarrhea? Constipation. What do you link that to? Are you saying that that's more relevant to um, an unhealthy diet or the lack of fiber, the lack of fluids? What is it that you think it is? Yes. (laughs) Yes to all of those. (laughs) Yeah. It does depend on the person. I even hear people say, well, this is how my family is. And I mean, sometimes it could be that the whole family has a sensitivity to a food that's very common to maybe their Mm -hmm. ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Um, It can be a lack of nutrients because they're eating out all the time and they're really just starving. I mean, what I generally see is people are, um, they're malabsorbing, they're starving. I mean, how many people overweight um, have I seen over the years? And when I really test them, they're lacking nutrients. So that means their metabolism isn't able to work properly. That means their digestive system isn't doing the thing that it's supposed to. And, you know, really, we should be beings that eat good food, absorb good nutrition, eliminate the waste, um, wake up the next day and have the same thing happening. And we shouldn't be exhausted and hormonal and emotional and sleepless and overweight and skin problems and You know, the list goes on and on and on. And, you know, it's digestion you have to take a look at first. So in terms, we talked about the frequency of this of the stool that we should be having. How about the color? Are we concerned if it's reddish or green or yellow or all of these other kinds of colors outside of brown? Generally, I mean, it can have, you know, differences. I mean, uh, you know, silly. My sister once used a tablespoon of green food coloring for some Christmas thing and the whole family woke up the next day with, with green you know, stool. bright green <laughs> we had all we did <laughs> thought you were dying exactly. right <laughs> <laughs> so you know there's the uh, strange thing like that and you know if your um, poop is floating and is light in um, color it often means that you're not able to um, break down the fats in mm-hmm. your diet mm-hmm. so you know um, it should be you know different sh- you know some shade of brown in general if there's red and it looks like there's blood well, maybe you have hemorrhoids. If it's really dark in color and black, I mean, sometimes alcohol can do that. Certain foods can do that. Um, and even uh, bleeding higher up in the uh, intestine can cause that. So this is why these are so important to, you know, you can get on the internet and just take a look. What should my poop mm-hmm. look like? Mm-hmm. And they'll give you the pictures of what it should look like. And, you know, if you're having um, diarrhea all the time, there's no way you're absorbing nutrition properly. And the same thing goes with constipation. Now you're reabsorbing toxins. So, you know, the norm is just like a little baby, you should be pooping every single day and, uh, you know, and not even thinking about it. The thing I do say to my patients is when you actually have to think about your digestion, even once, it's probably not working properly. Mm. Because when it is, it's just a normal process every day. It's just, you know, normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no attention on it. But, you know, if you're bloated and you don't feel good after eating or you're, you know, tired after eating or you, you know, trying to take things to keep yourself normal all the time. 
okay, well, something isn't correct, so that needs to be remedied as fast as you can. Would you say that you're seeing a lot of patients coming in or some patients coming in with irritable bowel syndrome, possibly acid reflux? I know you mentioned this. A lot of these things, do they have an emotional component? Would you say is all nutrition? How does it tie in to be multi-layered, a lot of these um, gastric hmm. issues, digestive issues? That's that's a good question. Um, I think it first starts off with, mostly I would say it starts off with the diet. And, you know, we have changed our perception of what is normal in the past 25 years as far as a normal diet. You know, children are able to go to Starbucks and get things that we only had at holidays any Tuesday of the that's week. True. And, you know, fast foods are everywhere that no one would not think that this is not a normal situation. And, you know, it just it keeps going on and on and on where, you know, you're not a happy kid unless you're eating out three or four times a week. And we've got, you know, these sucker moms and all this pressure and, you know, trying to keep up with everything that everyone should have, you know, quote unquote. And we're, you know, not at home cooking and we're not teaching our kids to cook properly and, you know, to take the time and uh, digest our food and, you know, enjoy family time. So there's a breakdown on so many levels that starts Mm -hmm. there. And then if you're not getting nutrients in your diet, you are more apt to have an emotional component. I mean, you know, for instance, somebody that's eating a lot of sugar, I mean, that's not the person I'm going to have an argument with. They're they're not going to be very sane and, uh, you know, they're not fed well. So, you know, feed them a good meal, get them a good night's sleep, and then you can have a conversation that may be heated. But Mm -hmm. it's impossible to argue with somebody and have a decent conversation when they aren't being fed properly. So, you've got that components as well. And then as a chiropractor, knowing that the nervous system needs to be working as good as it can. um, If you have back pain, if you have, uh, you know, different discomforts in your spine or your body itself, you know, we do have nerves that go to every single area of the body. So that should be addressed if you're looking for natural solutions as well. And, you know, thank goodness there is medication for different things. Thank goodness there's surgeons. Thank goodness there's emergencies and uh, emergency rooms. But, you know, that's the the lesser majority of people if they would actually get these bits of pieces of information from when they were children and taught to cook well and, you know, take some enzymes and eat better. And, you know, that's for treats only and, you know, only drink water and, you know, not send them with, you know, juices and pops and Gatorades and all these different things that the body just doesn't need it. It's, you know, it's having enough it's got stress on it as it is much less than not feeding it properly what do you think about intake of milk um animal um, milk in terms of its connection to lactose intolerance are we seeing a rise of patients who are lactose intolerant i think pretty much almost all of us are to some degree yeah, some degree and I, you know it's yeah. it's pasteurized it's no longer you know from the farm right mm-hmm. from the cow and it's not a real food that we are able to break down. And on top of it, we don't really have the enzymes to break down the calcium, um, the lactase in the milk. Um, so, you know, calves do, and there's tremendous amount of calcium. And, you know, uh, we are getting some, that's for certain, but it's changed now. So, you know, when I was a kid, we had five kids in my family. My mom was raised on a farm. Mm. I grew up in the Chicago area. And um, she was farms in farm. Chicago? That's where my, well, I was going to say she was in um, Alabama at the time. Oh, okay. And uh, so we were the only family on the block. Maybe there was one more that still had a milkman. Mm -hmm. And we had the milk thing out in the front of the -hmm. the house. And um, I was asking my mom, you know, years ago, I said, well, why did we have milk delivered twice a week? Why didn't she just have it once? And she said, well, it would spoil. Mm. And I went, oh, wait a minute. So if milk spoils within two, three, four days... Why is it okay that we have milk now that lasts three well, such a four long weeks shelf in life. our refrigerator? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, what are they doing to the cows? Well, what are they doing to the cows that are producing the milk? Because something's not normal. So, is that food actually good for us anymore? And I don't think it is. Mm. So, I'm not a fan of giving anybody milk at this point because it's been altered. Just shifting gears. When you are having a bowel movement... What position should you assume? I know that it, obviously you're going to be sitting on the toilet, but I know a lot of people, they take their cell phones, you know, to the bathroom or, you know, they're not really focusing 
or I know in other countries, they really are in more of a stooped position. Um, right. And does position have any kind of effect in terms of uh, the quality or the way you have a bowel movement? I do believe so. You know, I haven't discussed that very much, but I have a lot of patients who have bought those little potty squatties, their little stools that bring their legs up. And, you know, it sort of goes uh, the same thing. If you have a little constipated baby, you bring their knees up to their chest and, you know, start pumping them a little as far as the legs back and forth. And, you know, it does relieve the bowel and let them go a lot easier. So the fact is we are um, a little mindless on some of our habits these Mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as far as the cell phones, you are, you know, not really concentrating. And maybe you just don't want to concentrate. You just want whatever. But, you know, if it's taking you a long time to go, then there's probably some component that we've talked about that needs to be addressed as well. Um, But, you know, raising your knees up um, by putting yourself on a stool, your feet on a stool is helpful. Should I be taking laxatives every day to keep myself regular? No. And here's why. (laughs) Once you start doing that, your system starts to rely on it. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of herbs out there even that are, you know, quote unquote, good for that. But the fact is, if you're relying on something to have a normal process, that normal process is going to be hard pressed to work again because of the fact that you're using something else for it. And, you know... I mean, even drinking a coffee and some people say, well, once I have my coffee and a cigarette, boy, I can go. Okay, well, that's great, but that's also a stimulant. Mm -hmm. So why is it that you aren't able to go? A baby doesn't need a coffee and a cigarette to go. So, you know, you have to take a look and go, well, is that normal for a child? Okay, if it's not normal for a child, then it's, you know, some systems being bypassed rather than confronting what's being missed. And, you know, often it is digestive enzymes. Sometimes it's just, you know, specific nutrients in general that we're missing from our diet because we're eating, you know, making poor choices. Sometimes it's just to add more vegetables, eat some more fruit, drink more water, knock out, you know, the the other things that you're doing that, you know, are giving you energy in the day as compared to, you know, getting your system the nutrition it needs to make the energy. We should wake up perfectly uh, rested and we should go to bed tired. That's Mm. just how it should be. Thank you for this talk. Um, Just addressing the most basic human need. And that is simply having a bowel movement. We all do it. And so thank you for informing us and just enlightening us about this topic. Thank you for being here. Health educator, Dr. Julie Gatza, a chiropractic physician who helps patients maintain optimum health with a focus on role that digestion plays in maintaining a healthy immune system. We appreciate all the information you shared with us today, and we hope you stay healthy yourself and continue to do the great work that you're doing. And thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. This is Dr. Janine Cookerard from the nursing department here at NASA Community College. We want to thank you for listening to this week's edition of Your Family's Health. We'd like to get your feedback on Your Family's Health. Send your comments by emailing them to whpc at ncc.edu. Podcasts of today's show are available on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. This program was produced at the studios of Nassau Community College in cooperation with the nursing department. Join us next week for another edition of Your Family's Health on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.